Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 17th, and it is a overcast day here in southeastern Pennsylvania, but it's going to be beautiful. No rain today. We got a little bit of rain late yesterday, which was a good thing. Uh, yeah, look, looking, looking like it's going to be a perfectly pleasant Sunday. So I hope you're all well and enjoying your Sundays. Uh, I've got a couple things to talk about today. I haven't loaded a pipe yet because I want to talk about a new-to-me tobacco. Um, and also about the fact that I got to meet up with my buddy Eddie, Texas Pipe. And I'm going to put a link below to Eddie's channel so you can go and check him out. I, I, he hasn't been overly active on YouTube lately other than he's, he's a frequent commenter. He always shows up in live streams. Uh, and I occasionally get to see him in some uh, you know, online meetup type things. But Eddie was in Pennsylvania uh, last week and he got in touch and I said, hey, why don't we see if we can find some time? And he was busy and I was busy, but we found a, an hour or two on Monday afternoon where we could get together and uh, we met up in a local park and shared a few bowls of tobacco. And it was just a wonderful time. It's always great to meet someone that you get to know virtually uh, in real life. <laughs> it's amazing how comfortable that feels, you know, how it just feels like you've, you've known them. Uh, they're an old friend and you're just catching up. So it was a great time. Eddie, I hope you had a great time. Uh, and Eddie was kind enough to give me a tin of tobacco. And it is this uh, blend from Cornell and Deal called Kelly's Coin. And I really have been enjoying this. I mean, this was practically a full tin and we're down to about half a tin now. I've uh, been smoking it in the mornings. Uh, very reminiscent of Pegasus, but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was very kind of Eddie to, to, to offer this to me. And it's right up my alley. It's a heavy burly blend. Really good stuff. So I'm going to be loading that up in my Rick Black Morta. And we'll talk about it a bit. Uh, typical Cornell and Deal ribbon, coarse ribbon cut. The coin on the tin, the word coin can maybe make you think it's going to be coins, but it's not. And I think there's a reason why it's called Kelly's coin. Well, I know there's a reason why it's called Kelly's coin. So we'll talk a bit about the, the history behind this. Uh, really fascinating. Fascinating stuff. And, uh, you know, Cornell and Deal is a relatively young company as tobacco companies go. They, they just celebrated their 30th anniversary. But they uh, started with the purchase of a very old tobacco blending company. So I've got that loaded up. Uh, I'm ready to light. And by the way, this is very easy to pack, just perfect moisture level. You know, pretty much what I've come to expect from Cornell and Deal, and uh, they did not disappoint with this blend. And Kelly's coin. So, let me get this lit, and then we'll go back to the history stuff. Uh, I left my lighter upstairs this morning, and I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to walk back up. I'm lazy. But it gives me an opportunity to show you this. I found this lighter. I have no idea where I got this. It was in a box of stuff that I was as I was cleaning out. It's been here forever. I have no memory of this lighter ever existing, and yet here I have it. Um, not the kind of thing I would buy. I mean, I'm not like a huge Marilyn Monroe fan or anything, so I don't know why I have this. But anyway, <laughs> I took it out of the box. I said, that's odd. I struck it, and the darn thing lit perfectly with a nice big flame. I tried to strike it again and the flint just disintegrated. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to put a new flint in this or not. Something fun to play with at some point. But I've got my flint replacement, the atomic lighter, which I rather... Oh, is that right? Yeah, there we go. I, I rather ridiculously will use sometimes to light a butane lighter. You can see a great flame on it. And I need a tamper. And 
camper of the week has been Larry Blackett's Wiley Coyote. <laughs> So, first light, right off the bat you're getting burly, Cornell and Deal burly. That nutty, um, somewhat bitter, really delicious burly flavor. So, history upon history. So. Cornell & Deal is a relatively young company, but it started when Craig and Patty Tarler bought a blending company called Amar Blending, A-M-A-R. Uh, they were in New York, and the story is that they paid like $17,000 or something like that and loaded everything into the back of a van and drove it back to Pennsylvania. Uh, so they didn't buy a lot, but they bought the recipes uh, and some other stuff, but, but mostly the recipes. Now, Amar was formerly the Atlas Blending Company, which was established in the 1880s, I believe. I don't know the exact year, but I think it was early 1880s. So quite a long history. Uh, and Kelly's Coin is one of the Amar and possibly one of the Atlas Blends. And it would make sense that it's an Atlas Blend when you, when you hear about the history of the name. So... That's how it became, that's how it got its way into the Cornell and Deal catalog. Now, does that mean it's the same blend that people were smoking in the 1880s? I, it, no. It, as you well know, tobacco changes, uh, crops change. It's a natural product. It's not going to be the same from year to year. Bananas that were grown in the 1930s tasted different than bananas that are grown today. So, we don't have control over those things. Uh, surely this has the Cornell and Deal twist on it because it is the Cornell and Deal Burley. Uh, but the basic recipe is consistent with what Amar was selling. And uh, by the way, Amar was, from what I understand, was Craig Tarler's uh, go to blender. So. I'm guessing that the recipes that made it into the early C&D catalog were actually things that he enjoyed and probably influenced his approach to uh, blending and choosing blends to go into their catalog. So Kelly's Coin, um, I'm going to read to you the uh, highly informative label that C&D put on this. Inspired by the infamous Australian bush ranger and folk hero, Kelly's Coin is a full-bodied burly blend that packs a punch, burns smooth, and leaves you satisfied after just a single bowl. Perfect for those little, for those a little rough around the edges. Well, heck, I'm a little rough around the edges, right? Aren't we all? So, for you, those of you that are not familiar with the term bush ranger. Uh, you remember that Australia was at one time a penal colony where England would send prisoners. They would go into prisons. They would have to work, uh, you know, do prison labor type things. And then um, if after they served their sentence, they would be released and they could stay in Australia. Uh, probably had to stay in Australia because they didn't have the financial ability to leave. So it turns out that Ned Kelly, Edward Kelly, uh, known as Ned, was born in Australia to an Irishman whose first name, I think he was John Kelly. John Kelly was a, uh, an Irishman who was sent to Australia as a prisoner. He served his time, he got out of prison, he married and had a family. And uh, Ned at a very early age, got into trouble, uh, continued to get into trouble, was arrested. He escaped from prison, and that's what the Bush Rangers were. These were escaped convicts that sort of formed gangs, and they were sort of a cross between, um, a cross between like the 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 uh, Chicago style gangs 
uh, that you know about from the Prohibition era, and um, highwaymen uh, from you know the, the 1600s, 1700s. Uh, they lived in the bush in Australia. They would um, do raids. They were known for not being very kind to policemen. But they became sort of Australian folk heroes, and Ned Kelly was one of the most famous. He was also one of the last. Uh, and that's what Kelly's coin is named after. Why? I don't know. I'm guessing the coin has something to do with the fact that he was a thief and he, he stole coin. I, that's everything I know about the history. <laughs> but it's a good blend. Um, Eddie said it struck him as Pegasus without the Virginius. And I like Pegasus. So that intrigued me. And from the first bowl that I smoked there in the park with Eddie, I, I said, yeah, this is very much like Pegasus, but it is missing the Virginia. It does have a little bit of black Cavendish in it, and it does have some Virginia. It's not like it's zero Virginia, but it's not as heavy a Virginia blend. It doesn't have those, uh, at least as far as I can tell, those um, fermented red uh, Virginia leaves. It's, it's more of a bright Virginia. But it's by and large a burly blend. No detectable topping. Very clean tobacco flavor. It does not appear to be cased with anything other than water, which is typical of a lot of Cornell and Deal blends. One of the reasons I really like Cornell and Deal. And it's just got a really good, satisfying flavor. There's enough black Cavendish in there to smooth things out, but it doesn't really provide any flavor. And there's enough Virginia to just give a little bit of sweetness to it without being overly sharp. And then you've got that nutty, I said bitter earlier, that's probably not the best way to describe it because it's not really bitter, but it, it's like the, the difference between a, um, a peanut and a walnut. And when you eat a walnut, it's got some bitterness to it. Um, so this, if you're saying nutty, it could be peanutty or walnutty, and <laughs> this is more walnutty. And I actually find a lot of burleys to be more walnutty than peanutty. That's the last time I'll say that, I promise. Uh, where's my tamper? So yeah, this is this is actually really nice. So thank you, Eddie. Uh, I I do greatly appreciate the opportunity to try this. I had never heard of it, and it's one of their you know early one of Cornell and Deal's early additions to their catalog. They used to number them, uh, and unfortunately they don't do that anymore. But I, this had a this was like number four or six or something like that, eight maybe. I can keep going up in multiples of two. So, without question, if this was available in bulk, I would buy it. Um, it's only available in, in two ounce tins. So, I will probably buy some more tins, um, probably. Now I put it in the same category as something like Grey Ghost, which I really enjoy, but it's only available in tins. So from time to time I'll pick up a tin and enjoy it, but it's not going to be a steady part of my rotation. But only because it's not sold in bulk. This does, by the way, have some spiciness to it, which is a little surprising. Not really perique, but more of like a peppery on the tongue kind of spiciness.
Yeah, good stuff. So again, thank you, Eddie, for the uh, the opportunity to try this. And you guys, I've said it before, and I know many of you know this, but if you ever get the chance to meet up with somebody like that, even if it's just for an hour, it's such a cool experience. And don't assume that people are too busy for you because, you know, I'm, I would be overjoyed. You know, when Eddie got in touch, I, I'm the person that said, you know, because he just wanted to know, I forget, like restaurants in the area or something like that. And I said, hey, you know, if you want to get together. And I was a bit worried because I knew he was visiting friends and I thought, well, maybe he's not going to want to do that. But, but he was, you know, happy to do it. It, it don't don't feel like you're I would hate for somebody to be close by and feel like they shouldn't bother me because I'm busy I, I'll find time if I if it's at all possible and I say that because I'm the kind of person that feels that way you know I, I always worry about people think you know people being real busy and I'm gonna go and horn in on their day or something and, and I never I never feel that way when somebody gets in touch with me, but I'm always very hesitant to reach out to other people. And uh, that's just because I'm a little crazy. Ain't right in the head. <laughs> Which is proven by the fact that I'm using two lighters to light one pipe. Ah, uh, yeah. So. The mortar likes the burly too. So, uh, this coming Friday, we got a, a special uh, live stream planned. Special. Uh, my buddy, uh, hope I get this right. My buddy, uh, Tim Fournier. 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 Sorry, Tim. I have so much trouble with Tim's name. Uh, he's going to join me. Uh, we're going to do live side by side video, uh, if I can remember how to do that. I know I will be able to. And we are both going to be smoking H&H &H Rustic. And as you can see there by the, uh, the, the the bumper that I put up, we're going to watch Tim turn green. Well, hopefully not. But uh, the whole idea is that Tim has never had Rustica. I've had it before. Uh, you know, people are very mixed on the nicotine content of Rustica. You know, some people say, oh, I can't smoke it. It puts me on the floor. And other people say, man, eh, just a... Um, I've had it before. I like it. I'm, I'm not like over the moon about it, but it's, it's, it's a good, good blend. And, uh, I have a, oh, it's right here. I have an unopened tin here that I'm going to be opening during that live stream. Haven't smoked it in over a year. Uh, so it'll be somewhat new to me. And Tim has an unopened tin. <clears throat> Tim has an unopened tin that he's going to open during the live stream. And we're both going to smoke it and give our impressions. And if Tim turns out to be a weenie, he's going to get uh, sick and have to stop. <laughs> so that's that's the whole goal of this, is really just to watch and see Tim turn green. Uh, I don't think he will. I, I don't think it's as bad as, as people make it out to be. But hey, it'll be a fun way to spend some time on Friday night. And I'm trying to think of some way to do a, a contest. You know, Tim wants to do a poll at what time during the the uh, uh, the live stream he actually has to stop smoking or he actually does fall out of his chair or something. Uh, I, it's going to be hard to do that, uh, do that in a fair way. So I don't know what we're going to do, but we might have a little giveaway associated with it. If nothing else, we'll do a poll and uh, we'll be able to have some fun with that and see who, who, the, who the winner is, whether or not there's a prize. So that's it. Uh, got a regular Sunday planned. Actually have to go out and run a few errands this afternoon. Uh, other than that, just yard work and dogs and such. And uh, back to work on Monday. So I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday and looking forward to a great week ahead. If you get a chance to meet up with a fellow pipe smoker, do it. It's always a good time. And if you have a chance to try some Kelly's coin, I do recommend this one. It's, it's good stuff. 
All right, folks, with that, I will say you all take care. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Thank you.